Well, John, welcome back. And you are going to be guest number two. I don't want to make this the John Perez show. We talked about it. You kind of, you didn't twist my arm and said, let's do the silver psyop. Why not? And I thought back to what I've done. And one of them was um, a lecture I gave three times. It was called What If Silver Were Treated Like Gold? And basically the thesis of that whole thing was silver is money because gold is still treated as money by the banks. Even though they poop it, they don't talk about it. It's a fact. I mean, and then, of course, you look at who's got the money power these days. It's who has the most gold. And who is that? Well, China and Russia. And as yeah. you said, I think on one of your updates, you know, Russia's got a very clean balance sheet. I mean, they're the most fiscally strong uh, nation state of the world. And that's... Um, and they're a major power as well. So Mr. Putin, like him or not, if you're sitting in Russia and you're looking at your balance sheet, uh, you're looking pretty strong. So having said all that, John, I want to you know, get your take on the silver side. I just want to say another couple of things because people may not watch the first one with Dave Kranzler. But basically, I talked about the connotations around gold and silver, you know, the gold standard. And basically, the implications of almost anything gold is there's nothing better than and that carries through, you know, different metaphors and a lot that you see writ written. But silver's oftentimes got derogatory things, especially in the silver market trade, meaning, you know, what silver melt value, it's junk bags, junk silver, um, that type of thing. Now, there are positives. I want to be fair, you know, like the, every, every cloud is a silver lining, but even that implies something negative, this cloud or bad weather, but maybe there's a silver line. So I say that's somewhat positive. And then, you know, born with a silver spoon in your mouth certainly implies something positive about silver. Or you can take it, well, those privileged people that have that, you know, something, you know, you get something I don't. So, I mean, take it any way you want. The point I made with that, what if silver treated like gold is if silver was held as a monetary asset, there's so little of it available. And if the banks had a ratio of uh you know money wise uh, you know paper money wise i mean silver could be on the charts but nobody yeah. considers it as a monetary asset officially india used to most of the indian silver is either gone and not 999 fine they don't have very much from all indications that we can gather as reliable sources however russia and i don't know how much they have but i know they have it as a strategic stockpile from let's say trusted sources that you know I bank on. So I've already opened up with a lot of words, John. I want to hear your version, and I have a feeling this isn't going to be going down the rabbit hole. I think you're going to have one of those boring machines like we see that goes in and makes these <laughs> deep underground bases. I have a feeling <laughs> you're going to put the pedal to the pedal and take us on a wild ride. So, all right, Mr. Rabbit, <clears throat> tell us about the Silver Psyop. Well, I, I enjoyed the first one. I re actually really like Dave Kranzler. I like him. And uh, the uh, my take on silver here is something no one is expecting, but it's going to be a ton of fun. And it's kind of nice to look back, you know, if you've uh, broken out of the Stockholm Syndrome of having sympathy for your captors, then you might understand this. But um, uh, f first thing I wanted to say was what's, you know, I talked about doing this a while back and I wanted to, you know, I was just doing some research on this, and then all of a sudden, what came out of nowhere is Joe Rogan did an interview with Dr. Malone, and he talked about mass formation psychosis. And I went and just looked, listened to the doctor speak, and I thought, gosh, this guy's an absolute genius. He's right on the money. Just nailed the COVID psyop, you know, the bio warfare psyop, which we all know is now the narrative is falling apart. So they have to attack him on that. And I, as I was looking up, I just started getting the, doing my searches on Google, which is controlling the their algorithms. And it says, mass formation psychosis debunked. You know, mass formation psychosis. You know, wrong. And I thought, oh, okay, we're on the right path here. This is this is well. Anyhow, I went and looked at the definition of mass formation psychosis. And I just, the light went off on me because I thought I was already going down this line. And, you know, and that's why we call it the silver psyop. I talked about Bitcoin being a nation state economic psyop, which I believe it still is. And by the way, before I go any farther, breaking news just came out. 
Oh my goodness here. I, I, I need to read this to you. This just came out. The market, see, it's 1.13 p.m. And the market's just closed. And what just came out here? Ha, oh, ha. Oh. Our wonderful crypto conspiracies coming to pass here. <laughs> I hate to gloat, but, but I don't know what's going to happen. But today, January 27th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, right when the market closed, this is right out of barons.com. White House wants crypto rules as a matter of national security. Wait a minute. Hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> It just Come came on, out. John. This has got to be a setup. The 27th, I know that. I just got you on the phone. And you're telling me, as soon as the market closed, what? Say it again. It's the White House wants crypto rules as a matter of national security. The Biden administration is preparing to release an executive action that will task federal agencies with regulating digital assets such as Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as a matter of what? National security. I can't help but to hear executive order 13818. No notice, no warning. Well, a former person familiar with the White House plans tells Barron. So apparently this is a little side note here. And then uh, one more piece here. Then it's a it's got a paywall here. So I'll just read the first little second paragraph. The National Security Memorandum expected to come in the next few weeks would task parts of the government with analyzing digital assets and assembling a regulatory framework that covers cryptos, stable coins, and NFTs or non-fungible tokens. This person dot 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 it ends. Well, I was trying to picture a a uh, a federal government employee trying to analyze an NFT. You know, a, a quarter of a million dollar eight eight kilobyte. You know, what is it? I uh, know. <laughs> let me let me pause you there too, because what's so interesting, John. As what I wrote in 2014 as a public service, you know, article, my two bits about Bitcoin. And I said, basically, in essence, I said a lot of things, but the essence of it is if Bitcoin really takes off, watch out for the regulators. They don't want competition. Yeah. And what you just read seems like if it's a national national security, you know what that means. Or at least I will presume you know what that means. I'll let you speak for yourself. I know what it means. It means they can do damn near anything they want. What do you think? Yeah. yeah, it's gonna it's gonna make that crypto conspiracy series look look prophetic. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, I just had to you know I was going into this, but this kind of goes in with the silver psyop too because uh, you know what the basis of what I'm gonna go with here is this on on the silver psyop. Uh, just taking notes, and I, as I was doing all this work on Bitcoin and crypto, we all know that if you're in the silver business, we all know it's a suppression. But there's a couple things that caught my eye while I was doing the work on Bitcoin and where it came from its origins. And Kurt came in and really just, you know, he absolutely opened the do door wide open as to the origins and where it came from, going back to the guys that own MasterCard. Well, if you look back at the white paper, the date that it came out, and you look at the when silver took off it was about 2008 2009 and silver took off all the way up to 50 bucks in 2011 it was on a tear remember Matt? we was like we're going we're going past 50 bucks here you know it was just rip roaring here and of course those of us with experience which you Dave you and I we know that there's always that dark hand of you know the JP Morgans and the spoofers out there and uh, for the people that that are, that manipulate and suppress the market, they're out there. And of course, it was kind of interesting because both Bitcoin, silver was taken off. And of course, people were looking at Bitcoin. I was looking at Bitcoin. It was $9 when I first looked at it. And then I took it seriously at $100 as far as researching it. And here, gold and silver and silver was just on fire. So it was one of those things where, have you heard about Bitcoin? It's like, no, no. Look at my silver stocks. My gold stocks are going up. Bitcoin. Forget Bitcoin. That's just crypto. That's that's just fake money. That's nothing. Silver's going up. We're going to go to fifty dollars. Then we're going to go to sixty-five. And I remember, the, I'm thinking sixty-five dollars on the chart. So I was, you know, all of us that were in the silver business, we were just like, wow, this is the big Kahuna. This is going to go. And here, Bitcoin was just paralleling. So I thought they both started about the same time. Both those markets. But here's what's really important here. This is really, really important. Who's the biggest holder and biggest accumulator of silver since 2012? It was Jamie Dimon 
at JP Morgan, right? Jamie Dimon at JP Morgan, when it crashed, came in and started buying up silver. Also the same guys that picked up Bear Stearns on the silver crash back in, back I believe in 07, 08. So all of a sudden you got the Bear Stearns silver position, that was short position that was picked up, and then later on accumulated at 12. So you've got this movement here that obviously questionable activity. We know what was going on there, total suppression and manipulation. But the interesting part was this, going back, I was just staring at my notes, and then as I was doing the work on Bitcoin, and it came up that I didn't know that Jamie Dimon was the banker for Epstein. So then, you know, of course, yellow lights should be, if you're a silver guy, yellow lights should be going right now. If you're a silver guy and you don't like Bitcoin, it's red lights. You already got red lights going. Wait a second here. Jamie Morgan, Jamie Dimon, and JP Morgan, silver guy, and Jeffrey Epstein, what could possibly go right? Or what could possibly go wrong? And that's when I started looking back at dates and times, and I realized that their relationship had been 15 years. It goes back right around to the days of when Bear Stearns was flipped over into JPM. Well, here's my summary on the silver psyop here. This is really interesting. I believe that both Bitcoin, I've said before that Bitcoin is a nation state economic operation here. It's a psyop. It was designed to distract and destroy the U.S. dollar. Peter Thiel, Palantir boss, said that Bitcoin was a, as a Chinese economic tool to destroy the dollar. That was his quotes here. Incredible guy there. Um, and so now we've got, look back, all of a sudden I see a parallel. What I see is Bitcoin and silver going up at the same time. And then we see literally silver just died, literally rug pulled i mean rug pulled everyone uses rug pull for crypto no 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 silver is where the original rug pull has been always the rug pull came out and the, what, what do we have we had the classic take out silver put dow on silver and call bitcoin silver and we had dow and silver what happens we're waiting for what decoupling well if you were a bitcoin guy you're like oh well you know crypto is the future and here silver is going up and all of a sudden decoupling silver just gets whacked and then what launches crypto takes off to the moon and after that crash that is when jp morgan started just piling in on the silver piling in on the silver while crypto distracted and money that would have normally gone into gold and silver is all of a sudden on the sidelines staring at crypto going wow this is just going off and kids are becoming millionaires and in a matter of weeks there's crypto millionaires and all of us in the silver and gold department we're all sitting at the bottom of the toilet you know and just uh wondering what the hell just happened here so that was uh that's what i saw and then as i dug more and more i realized there's something about this pivot point where jeffrey epstein one of the originators original guys in bitcoin happened to be friends with Jamie Morgan, who, Jamie Dimon, who was the big guy in the silver department there. So that's where I'm starting from. So you draw a line back here, silver and gold starting line, silver and Bitcoin, Epstein, Jamie Dimon, and you look, you say, wait a second here. Uh, J uh, Epstein said that Bitcoin is not a currency. And who ended up promoting a bit, who's been promoting, actually, I believe it was JP Morgan said Bitcoin is going to $146,000 recently. And it's pulled back since then, pulled back hard. And all of a sudden, of course, they never talk about silver going up or down. But Jamie Dimon went from the biggest accumulator of silver. And anybody can look this up. The D. Ted Butler has all this stuff uh, researched very, very well. You look at all the accumulation of silver, and then you look at why... Weren't they promoting silver? Well, suddenly Bitcoin is supposed to be worthless, but yet JP Morgan's putting it up. So there's plausible deniability going on both sides as to where his position was on this. But the more I looked at this, the more I realized that when this mass formation psychosis came forward, I applied it here and I thought, what do we have here? I've got a parallel world here. We got silver decoupling from Bitcoin like it's the Dow, like Bitcoin turned out to be silver and silver turned out to be the Dow crashing. And I actually, when I first got into crypto, I actually looked at Bitcoin as being like gold and Litecoin being like silver. And I actually 
my strategy was based on, okay, Litecoin is going to soar, which it did. It went up much faster than Bitcoin. Well, you know, now after doing the crypto conspiracy, looking back, if you were out trying to raise money for silver mining projects, anywhere from 2012 up until till this year, 2021, uh, you, people look at you, are you kidding me? I'm doing Bitcoin. Everyone's Bitcoin. And all of a sudden you go on stage you start seeing all these former silver promoters and sil former silver guys and former gold guys, they've gone all in on Bitcoin. And I thought, wow, they're all in on Bitcoin. Everyone's so excited here and the Pied Pipers go off and, you know, it's uh, everyone's running off. Here goes the Pied Piper up into crypto land. And I'm watching silver just thinking, man, so oh, 2012 silver metal go down for a year, come back. <laughs> Little we know. It was like it was like it was like we Job in the Bible suffered seven years. If you're a silver investor, well, you suffered like nine or ten years. So that to me tells me it's like well, silver investors have suffered more than Job in the Old Testament, and that's an important thing. Well, looking back in hindsight, I started staring at this thing and I looked at how are people doing so well in crypto? Crypto has had the opposite of a psyop than silvers. The silver side got punished into the ground, buried, mocked, and sold off. Mining companies went out of business. People couldn't raise money. You couldn't do anything. But yet the whole time, central banks are accumulating gold and JP Morgan amassed a colossal silver position and was even charged with spoofing the markets and knocking the silver price down. Uh, Chris Marcus, the big silver short. And you've covered this. I mean, David, you you know, you've seen the whole thing. You know the game. So I came to the conclusion after look watching this mass formation explanation from this doctor, I thought, you know what's happening here? We've got a parallel world of psychological operations perpetrated on the silver community as well as the crypto community. For the crypto community, everything is FUD if it's not going up. Crypto always comes back. We always come back. Oh, we've been through these dips before. Crypto is the new gold. It's the new digital gold. Gold is an old relic. Hashtag drop gold. Those are all propaganda pieces. That's all propaganda. And, and just as the mass formation psychosis theory is, everyone was using the same terms in crypto. It wasn't, you know, what what's what are the earnings this month for Bitcoin? Uh, there are no earnings. Have they pulled out any gold out of the ground? Any product? Mm, no product. Uh, so how's the owner doing? The guy who started it? Mm, it's anonymous. But so I'm asking these questions. Well, that's fud. So all these all these terminologies, I started looking at them and looking at how they are perpetrated. The drop gold budget, uh, the timing it was put out, and then looking at, of course. We're, I'm talking deep state cabal here. So all the media's in on it. Is YouTube in on it? Probably. Why? Because they're owned by Google. And all the DNA, if you look at the genetic DNA of the business genetic DNA of Binance or Litecoin, you'll see it's got Google all over it. I went that far. So um, now you've got Bitcoin going up and it never goes down. You've got silver going down and it's an old relic. It does sucks. And anyone you talk to in the silver, oh, John, I, I bought silver. It sucks. It's just a bad, I'm sitting here waiting here doing nothing. Well, you probably didn't know that you'd be waiting longer than Job did in the Bible when he suffered and lost everything. And so I attribute that suppression, that extended suppression and the, the extended promotion of Bitcoin and I put them together, I realize this is a psychological operation here. And the one thing that brings it together, the fact that the CEO of JP Morgan was the bank for Epstein, who was there at the beginning of Bitcoin, who's also at the same time, what are the odds that the banker for Epstein's Bitcoin is also the same banker accumulating all the silver? I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to speculate here right now. All right, here's the plan. You're going to, we're going to do, you're going to do Bitcoin. He's, this is going to be promoted like this. We've got all these influ influencers that have been paid. And actually, a few influencers have sent me emails saying they got paid to promote. Huh. <laughs> That's going to be coming out in the future here. So I'm going to get the silver. We're going to knock it down. This is pure speculation. It's not financial advice. It's not accusation for anyone wondering. But look it up here. JP Morgan spoofing silver price. We know at a front page on Bloomberg, it was listed as a potential RICO violation. Right. So... This is proven. This is not conspiracy here. So now you've got 
a group suppressing silver that went so far as to be listed as potentially violating RICO statutes on the front page of Bloomberg, while at the same time, you've got all media promoting Bitcoin. And now I've come to the conclusion here, and it's adding up here real fast. And watching this, this article today, I, I said Bitcoin's wreckable. Well, we're, I think we're about ready to see Bitcoin is about to go through what silver went through in 2011 when it hit 49.50 bucks and went straight down. We're, and we're going to see that in Bitcoin. And for what does that mean for silver, silver, gold stocks? That means we're going to the moon if that happens, if that's true. And that's my theory here. I believe the silver PSYOP is switching gears now. And it should be no surprise that Gary Gensler went from the CFTC to now at the SEC, ready to regulate. Here's Bitcoin pulling back. You've got Kazakhstan has shut off the miners. You've got China has shut off the miners here. And I had said earlier in the crypto conspiracy that Bitcoin was wreckable, that they were going to problem, reaction, solution, Hegelian dialect. Bitcoin's the problem. The, the numbers came out today on bit crypto money laundering it's in the billions and billions of dollars and all of a sudden solution white house wants to rule as a matter of national security which goes to my theory in the crypto conspiracy that there was a military operation going on under the radar it was a sting operation here and now all of a sudden this is a national security security issue and in the executive order 13818 it's a we're still in a national emergency now, what makes this really interesting is that it was Joe Biden on December 16th, 2021. He extended the executive order 13818 here. If that executive order is being applied right now, in my silver PSYOP theory, Bitcoin is going to die here real soon. And they're finally going to let gold and silver go because Basel III is about ready to take off. Is let, applying. Me, let me stop you there. Done an excellent job. I just have a couple comments. Okay. Well, I I don't agree with you on Basel III. I've written about it. I think uh, it's overplayed. I don't think anyone that's read it. But I'm not saying you're wrong. I've read it like three times. I've checked with about three fund managers. None of them think that it's going to have a huge effect. Uh, right. Plus, the, my last comment that will probably make more sense to you than anything I just said is when do the banks follow their own rules? I mean, look at JP Morgan and Spoofy, you know, I mean, these banks basically do whatever they want. So I'll just leave it there, not to argue. Yeah. But oh, no, I, back now, to what I, I really uh, want to say, go ahead, you can comment back. I have a couple more things. Well, I agree with you there. I think this is more of a psychological, you know, Basel threes out there. Uh, my theory here on gold and silver is this. Uh, if they pull back crypto, if the White House pulls back crypto here and they lock it down, I have a video on my YouTube showing legis legislators talking about m turning Bitcoin owners into criminals and then exchanges outlawing all exchanges worldwide. I believe this is going to be a worldwide agreement. I don't think this is just Biden. I believe this is going to be worldwide. And this lines up with the IMF coming after El Salvador and telling them to stop using Bitcoin as legal tender. Obviously, this is orchestrated. It's coming out exactly as I expected it to here. But... On the Basel three, I have to agree with you that on the outside, there's really not much talk about it. But my position on that was more of a uh, psychological, okay, Basel three is there. Nothing's happened yet. Are they waiting for a trigger? I just saw the 101st Airborne is on alert today to go to Ukraine. That's a big one. Eight, I think the 82nd also. Uh, let me it, let me pause you there if it's okay. Uh, I've got a couple of comments. So first of all, I'm glad I gave it back to you because what you just said was profound. So a uh, couple things here. One is the you know we're going to 50, and I will not name names, but believe me, when I called the top and I did, uh, <laughs> I got so many emails from professionals, silver uh, fund <laughs> saying I was wrong. And I was going to lose my reputation. I'd never be able to put my head on stage again. Silver's going to 100 easy. You're going to look like a fool. Basically, I never tried to help me. I mean, these were sincere people saying I was miscalling the market. But, you know, I'm my own person like you are. I called the top. It turned out to be that way. Second comment. I had no idea that it would be suffering for eight, nine, ten years. You know? <sighs> I mean, I, I thought a couple years maybe. 
And what was really in my favor was that first year, yeah, it got smashed, it got killed, it got creamed, but it was holding above 30, which for almost a year. And that gave me confidence, wrong, yes. looking backwards, that there was enough margin in the miners to keep funding them, you know, get more product out of the ground, that type of thing, because the margins were good. Uh, but 26 was my line in the sand. I put out for my paid members and people that always take pot shots at me probably have never paid me a dime and I don't care about their money. I'm just telling you that they don't know what the inside is unless they pay for the inside information. And I put out a big alert, John, at 26 and told all the people, especially the head, it applied more to the hedge fund guys because they really got to know 26, it's going down. It bounced off it twice. I think it was the third time. It's, I'm sorry, folks, it's going down. And of course, they hedged uh -huh. massively. Probably called you up at Monix and said, you know, we've got a few <laughs> hundred thousand contracts. I'm joking, but you know what I'm saying? And luckily, it saved their butts because, and then after 26, I mean, we've just gotten back above that, what, last year? Uh -huh. uh, it's been that long. So I don't want to make too much. So there's one more thing, and I want you to touch on it because. You know, I've been getting some pushback, which is fine. This is a discussion. We call it a conspiracy for a reason. As much as I'm neutral on Bitcoin, I think the real task here that people just kind of ignore is who's it tied to Epstein. But beyond that is what's the real thing. Let's forget about Epstein for a minute, John. It's Tether. What the hell's going on with Tether? <laughs> if you, so every time I say Bitcoin, just replace it with Tether. And start yeah. to think on your own. I mean, I'm getting a little upset because Tether is a massive problem. Yeah. 60% of the trades on Bitcoin are from Tether. Tether yes. looks like, the more I look at it, a complete, absolute, and total scam. And yet yeah. they've got enough ability in the fiat fiasco to delay it, as Kurt <coughs> Wickert told us, to keep throwing lawyers at it. And delay, 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 but that can only go so far. So if you don't mind taking us a little left turn on the rabbit hole and tell me if I'm out of my mind or tell us really, I think, the issue. Yeah, you know, you're right. And I, it's, I, it, early on, I talked a lot about that tether at one point represents up to 80 to 90% of the volume at Bitcoin. So people are buying, in fact, people are buying the PSYOP. This is the mass formation psychosis. You're buying Bitcoin and 80 to 90% of the volume coming in is Tether. It's a fake Federal Reserve. It's a fake offshore Federal Reserve. Okay, I'll say it one more time. It is a digital fake Federal Reserve using fake fiat, 90% to push Bitcoin. And since Bitcoin never stopped going up, I thought, what could this be? Well, it's Tether. Well, what, let's think, what are the psychological effects on you? Let's say, you you know, I mean, there are people, the people like these YouTube channels, I'm an investor in crypto. I'm like, oh, would, would you, I bought it and got rich. I'm like, well, how did that work? And I'm like, well, they really did, you know, according to the numbers, if you believe yeah. the numbers for real, well, thanks to Tether. Well, you know, all of a sudden I'm a Bitcoin, I'm a Bitcoin millionaire. Well, they don't realize it. What they don't realize is that it's connected to Tether. If this national security objective, which it probably will, cuts off Tether, Bitcoin's going to Bitcoin's going to go to my forty-two hundred dollar number, which at that time when I said that Bitcoin was at forty-two thousand dollars, well, minus ninety percent, we're down to forty-two hundred dollars. Take away Tether. So really, you're not buying Bitcoin. You're buying you're buying the mirage called Tether. You know, it's it just is not there. It's it's that whole blow up doll thing about bitcoin you know uh you wake up and your wife is a blow up doll it wasn't there it was fake sorry you know and now the air is coming out <laughs> you know uh <laughs> that's what's gonna happen if this i'm looking at this i can't believe 3 p.m national security this is like literally um uh, the crypto conspiracy series is going to be taught in, in in the future, either in either in psychology classes or economic classes. Is going to be taught. But well, I um, want to just interrupt one more time, and I want to finish with you. I want to have you wrap up, and you can wrap up as long as you want. Thank you again. The other thing, even you know, all you said is extremely important. What you read at the beginning with you know national security issue. I mean, that is paramount. But let's say that didn't exist, just as a thought experiment. I think mm -hmm. another real big detractor is this ESG. 
this environmental, everything's got to be green, oh. right? Social, it's social, the social, uh, you know, warriors out there. And then, gee, government to force everybody to be environmentally correct and socially just, right? So that's over everything. Well, you get uh, the Elizabeth Warrens, you know, get the Pocahontas out there telling you that Bitcoin's wasting energy. And all of a sudden, that's another big hammer to bash it down. Bitcoin uses energy. Well, of course it does. That's the way it was designed. Good, bad, or indifferent. My point is that the ESG warriors may, and that's just another thing. What you said was far more important than that. But I just want to say there's multiple things. Maybe that ESG will be put into the national security thing. You know, we got to be very careful about our energy. We're going yeah. to war. We need all the energy we can get for the war effort, blah, 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 blah. So, John, free, free open mic. Just wow, take you down to yeah. the summary <laughs> and close out for this. And thank you. I mean, this was an important night. And no, I had a very small inkling of what you were going to say about your take on a PSYOP. Fascinating. Of course, you know, it's just a PSYOP. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, it's it's gonna. This will add up here with the stuff coming out here. I agree with you on the ESG thing. They're gonna come out and basically, you know, it's gonna be Greta is gonna be your new national security crypto advisor for Bitcoin. You know, <laughs> you're gonna open up your account and it's gonna be Greta, a, Greta's face staring at you, saying, "How dare you?" You know, and it's like, oh, there, there go my keys, my my Bitcoin keys. You know, it's it's Greta. I mean, that's what they're gonna do. It's pretty obvious. And um, uh, all this is going to unravel. And all of a sudden, the Bitcoin people, I've probably been telling, I mean, I've written this out. Anyone who follows me is like, John's been writing this everywhere. Sell Bitcoin, buy silver, sell Bitcoin. It's because I was anticipating this. To, it started, came in, they crossed, and now it's going to cross again. And this time, Bitcoin's going to suffer what silver did. And then, of course, the hodlers are going to, the hot. For, for Bitcoin people, you if you if you weren't a silver trader, it's gone through the suffering. You have no idea what you're about ready to go through. You want to talk about hodler? You talk to anyone who stayed in the mining sector, stayed focused, stayed loyal for nine years, and is here to run the next run. For the those of you that decided to go all in on crypto, ugh, it's going to be hard to go through two crashes. <laughs> silver first, then Bitcoin. So it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. But the silver psyop here, I think we're about ready to take a change here. But the mass formation psychosis, I think it was double barrel. One barrel was pointed at the silver guys to take them out in, in mid-flight. And the other one was pointed at the Bitcoin people and to convince them, get them to believe that Bitcoin never comes down. And you see it. I, I'll, I'm going to send you some scripts we'll put in here. I had some guy who called me, called me up and he called me, texted me. He says, I got, he just sold $497,000 in Bitcoin and sends me a screenshot. He says, I just put it all in Shiba Inu. And I was like, real. I go, dude, what the fuck are you doing here? Are you, you're going to lose everything. And man, Shiba's down like 90%. That 497, I was like, you should have bought silver. You should have bought silver. Silver was like, what, tw I think 12 or 13 bucks at the time. He's like, wow, you were right. I said, you'd be up 100%, man. You'd have a million dollars. One trade. You wouldn't be staring at the screen like you do every day. You'd be at the beach going to Vegas and this and that. It was an easy trade here. So anyhow, there's more to this silver psyop. We'll talk about it here. But uh, some stuff, the news coming out here, I believe uh, if uh, we find out that some of these military events are connected to Bitcoin, they're just gonna, I think they're going to zero it out. I still think they're going to zero it out and just pull Tether. All they got to do is shut off Tether because China, because it's based in Hong Kong. Yeah. And so if China decides, hey, we're going to go invade or kind of go fly around Taiwan and wave a, f wave a few weapons over there, Tether's going to go click off and we're going to see $4,200 Bitcoin. And then silver and gold are absolutely going to, I believe silver and gold, what's today? I said, remember my prediction? I said twenty six fifty silver, thirty dollars and thirty three in the first quarter, and it would be a geopolitical event in three DEFCON theaters, primarily Ukraine, that are going to push um, silver forward in the first quarter of twenty twenty two, and it's going to break the COMEX and destroy the shorts. I still believe that. I mean, I'm sure if silver got to a thousand dollars, the guys over at J.P. Morgan would be jumping up and down and telling everyone how smart they are. <laughs> 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 All right, John, I think we'll end it there. Thanks for the second uh, episode of the Silver Psyop. Wow. 
didn't know what to expect. As usual, I had to fasten my seatbelt and put it on pretty tight. <laughs> I'll be back with you. And of course, the crypto conspiracy isn't over. And then, of course, the uranium, the dark side of uranium oh. one presses on. So I'm sure we'll see you plenty. And thank you. Uh, one last thing before we close. How do uh, people find you oh. on your Telegram channel? Oh, yes. Silver is money. Telegram. Telegram rocks. By the way, when everything goes zero, when everything blacks out, they can say when they shut off Bitcoin, when they shut off YouTube, and they shut off everything else, Telegram will still be operating. <laughs> so go to Silver is Money Telegram. I've got a Silver is Money news show where I do a, a nightly news show on Telegram, but it's archived and it's only on Telegram. So you can't find it anywhere else. And those are actually some really good shows. And then I've got a new channel called Midnight to Damascus. And that's where I really go deep diving into some interesting things like the Rods of God and Tonga and other places. And good shows there. A lot of viewers, a lot of viewers there. And it's exciting. It's growing here. And by the way, David, I want to say good job on crypto conspiracy number 17. Number 17, a lot of people came in. A lot of new viewers came in from your YouTube on the Telegram, and they're really excited. All right. Thank you, John. We'll be back soon. Take care now. Thank you.